Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. I'd like to take a portion of the scripture today, six verses, to affirm your hearts that they are, that your heart is established before God, that you are in that place that you know that you know by faith that you have a broad entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I use these words from 1 Peter, or excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'll read to you these six verses starting at verse 5, okay? But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will neither stumble for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For this reason, he says there in verse 5, for the reason that now grace and peace are multiplied unto you through the knowledge of the Father and His Son. For by the precious promises that God has given through Scripture, you have now become a partaker of his divine nature and live free from the corruption that's in the world through lust. So because you now share the divine nature, he says, add to your faith in Christ and the Father, virtue. So today's devotion is about virtue. Virtue is that incredible divine life in us, divine light, divine nature, of the spirit, of the life of the Father and the Son. It is, the word virtue can also be seen as goodness, but in this sense, it is clear what it is, that the divine nature is what Peter calls this virtue. He says, add to your faith virtue. Let's look at that word for a moment in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, yeah? And I'll read from the Amplified, listen to this. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people, that you, may be, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You see, the Lord wants you to have this absolute assurance that your calling and election are settled. I know God's called me and I'm His. He's chosen me to be His own. And we're all human beings are chosen to be His own, but not every human being responds to the call. Not everybody surrenders their life. But praise the Lord for all of you that have surrendered your life. And He says, when you have these things, right? When you have these things, he said, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. Barren, you understand what it means. There's no life coming forth from you. A, a woman who bears a child, she's not barren, she bears a child. Life comes forth from her, a new life, a beautiful life, a beautiful baby. I will, I'll never forget when our first son Joshua was born and the shining light of God on my wife's face when she saw that beautiful baby after she had worked for over 24 hours to get him to come forth. My goodness, it was beautiful. I'll never forget her face shining so beautiful, seeing that beautiful boy. And life came forth, you see. He says, if you, if you know these things, if these things are yours, he said, and abound, keep multiplying, growing, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will not suffer with short-sightedness spiritually or blindness, as if you all of a sudden 
start thinking that you've never changed. You've never become new. You're still that old person. The, those old sins still have authority over you. It's unbelievable that people can go back to the way they used to live without Christ. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. It's, it's, it's grievous beyond com comparison. I mean, you, you want to cry and cry and cry because it's like somebody choosing to go to damnation willfully. And that is the absolute madness of the nature of sin. It so deceives you that you can follow after that which destroys you and think it's okay. You've seen it happen. People use certain uh, things that they know. I mean, it's like smoking. It says on the package, smoking kills, and yet people continue to do it willfully. And that's the madness of sin. So no, thank you, Jesus, for coming to save us from sin. Amen. But he says, if you have these things in abound, you will neither be bare nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord, and you will not suffer with blindness and short-sighted as if your old sins are not gone. But you will be diligent to make your call and election sure and have a bold entrance, abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom. And you know, dear friends, when ministers are maybe looking at things from their own need of seeing something happen or their own excitement of seeing something happen. They're often more concerned about how many people are there instead of the condition of those precious people's soul. I remember in Ian Bounce's book, Power Through Prayer, oh, it's 50 pages and 20 chapters of this immense book. You can now go online and listen to it, narrate it. But one of the ministers was laying on the floor all night on the wooden floor in the bedroom and his wife woke up and, and saw him on the floor there on the cold floor. And she says, oh, darling, darling, come back into bed. And, and she said, he said, how can I? When the soul of 3,000 precious souls is leaning on me for their everlasting life. He, he felt so responsible that they would have these things abound in them and not go lost and how important it is that we're not just considering what makes us feel like we've got something, but that we consider what God's entrusted to us, the precious souls of people to minister to them this life of the Spirit that I'm talking to you about today. You see, the first thing Peter says, now that you have this faith in God and have become a partaker of His divine nature, by which you live free from the corruption that's in the world through lust, he says, add to your faith virtue. In other words, you now have faith in God, in Christ. Let that life of His divine nature become real to you. Let it become real to you. As Peter would say here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of Him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In Philippians chapter four, verse eight, and it's also from the Amplified, he says, for the rest, for the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemingly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue or excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things and fix your minds on them. I know I've, I've gone through what I would call the School of the Spirit, the School of the Discipline of the Lord, Lamentations 3, verse 26, uh, verse 21 through 26 talks about this. And I go through the School of the Spirit where the Lord would grant me to become so overwhelmed and aware of His divine nature and then show me that which conflicts to it, that which grieves the Spirit as 1 Thessalonians 5 talks about in Ephesians 4 that which grieves and vexes the Holy Spirit, that which quenches His, His manifest presence. It's like a flower that opens up in the beauty of the sun and where a dark cloud comes, it closes back up again. Have you ever seen that? I have. 
It's amazing, I think, that the sun comes and the flower opens up, and then the dark cloud comes and the flower closes and shields itself and protects that which is valuable in its, in its beauty. And the Holy Spirit is like that. And the Holy Spirit would take me through this school, this discipline, where I had to learn that which pleases God and that which displeases God. Hebrews chapter 5, I think starting at verse uh, 5 or 7 through 14, talks about having our senses exercised in the use of this virtue of godliness to discern both that which is godly and right and which is ungodly and not right. And having our senses disciplined. And that's what Peter is saying. For us to stay fruitful, for us to be able to have eyes to, to see the things of God, for us to be able an inner man to know I've been forgiven, I've been washed, the old has passed away, behold, everything has become new. For us to live in that absolute steadiness of our calling and election to know we have a bold entrance into the everlasting kingdom, we need to stay aware of the divine virtue. We need to stay conscious of it. We need to live in it as if it is our blood flowing through our veins because that's where the virtue is. It flows through your blood. It is alive and active in you. And for us to stay in that place, you know, it's worth more than anything else. It's worth more than anything else. And, and I am so grateful that the Lord is willing to do what it takes for us to be able to add to our faith virtue. In other words, you may say, I trust in God. Let me close with this little story and it helps us maybe make the point today. I went to go minister in North Hampshire, which is a county here in, in Britain, many, many years ago. And I was greeted at the door by a man who shook my hand and squeezed it really hard. He was 58 years old. And he said, I've been in this church for 40 years. When I was 18 years old, people were standing in line to come into this place from all over the nation. And the power and presence of the Lord was here. But now we have a new pastor who thinks he's going to have revival by painting the walls and putting soft chairs in. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And I understood what he meant. You see, sometimes we disregard those who have been faithful, those who have been loyal. And sometimes we can even feel maybe held back by them because they've seen how the Spirit moves and they have stayed faithful this time. But I understood that he was like it says in Matthew 25, a lamb without oil. He had been a virtue, a virgin, so to speak. He had kept his faith, his heart faithful to God, but he had no more oil in his lamp. That's why there was a hardness about him and a brassness about him, but he was faithful. And God honors those who are faithful. And when the end of the service was there, and it was just a small meeting with maybe 10, 15 people, and the young minister who was in his early 20s, so excited, so excited. And when the end of the meeting and I heard him praying in the most strangest way and understood what he was doing, he was mimicking what he did when he was 18 and felt the power of God. And while what he did was the same, there was no life there. There was no power there. So it was strange. It didn't fit. And I felt such compassion come from the heart of my Savior Jesus for this man. And I had the privilege to lay hands upon him. And Jesus filled his lamp with oil as he baptized him afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit and the virtue began to flow. And my goodness, I wish you could have been there and seen what I saw as the divine life flowed from that vessel that had been so dry for 40 years. And the beauty of that divine life the light of that life that shone from that precious man, it befitted the 58-year-old man. He was no longer needing to mimic what he felt when he was 18. Now he could walk in the fullness of that life when he was 58. And that's what the Lord is looking for in you and me today. Not to be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. Not to forget that we've been forgiven and are a new person but to live in the reality of it, knowing we have a bold entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Savior Jesus. 
And the Lord is giving this to you right now. And I believe this week we're going to have a phenomenal time in these devotions. So I trust that you will join me every day. Have a good day. God bless.